Hello lovely, in this video we're going to be looking at the decay of milk as one of the practicals for your GCSE biology. We're going to be taking you through the experiment, what the results should look like and one of the key things that could come up in the exam, alternatives that you can do to follow decay. Okay, so some of the practicals you might be asked to do, we're going to be looking at measuring the rate of decay. So remember that rate just means a change over time, a measured change or an amount of change it can be anything. And we'll talk about some examples. It doesn't matter necessarily what the change is, as long as you can kind of measure it, record it, see it, um, and then you can measure the rate of that change. So to see how a factor like one of the ones we talked about, specifically temperature is the normally the easiest one, to see how temperature affects the rate of decay, this example uses the decomposition of milk, which we've already seen the video of. This experiment uses the lipase enzyme. OK, so it breaks down the fats, the lipids in the milk to produce glycerol and fatty acids. And because you're producing acids, it's going to decrease the pH. So the change in pH is the change that we're going to be measuring here. And we can measure that change in a, and see how long it takes for that to happen to get the rate. So how are we going to detect this change? So if you add some alkaline solution to the milk to make sure it's alkaline and then add the indicator phenolphthalein, the milk's going to turn pink because this indicator turns pink in the presence of alkaline solutions. And then as you produce the acid or as the acids are produced, the indicator is going to slowly turn colourless. So the lower the pH gets, the more acids there are, the more colourless the indicator is going to become. And because we're calculating rate, if we time how long it takes for that change from pink to colourless, then we can work out the rate. So just measure the time it takes for the colour to go from pink to clear. And uh, that's how you can estimate the rate of this reaction. Now we would just need to repeat the same reaction. So milk plus an alkaline plus the indicator and then do it at different temperatures to measure the effect on the rate. You can use water baths to control the temperature to improve it rather than using beakers. And you can use a pH meter as well instead of the indicator if you wanted to. So you can continuously record the pH change and get a number instead of just the indicator and watching it. So you can record, say, how long it takes to get to pH 2 using the pH meter. All of these are improvements to the method. Um, or things that would make it more accurate, an estimate, um, by maintaining the temperature with a water bath and keeping it constant, and then using a pH meter to get quantitative data rather than qualitative data. The idea here is that we're measuring the rate of decay, but we're not actually directly measuring decay by microorganisms in this practical. It's just a model because the microorganisms that carry out decay normally would produce enzymes which would then digest the milk and digest those lipids in the milk and produce the fatty acids. We're just directly adding the enzyme lipase to this. The results and the explanations are very similar to any enzyme reaction practical you'd be confronted with or that you've done. So the explanations of what's happening is the same because we're not actually directly measuring microorganisms here. They'd be quite slow um, and at some temperatures, not much would happen at all. So we're kind of cutting out that step here by just using the enzymes that they would normally release to do the decay. So the idea is that we do this at different temperatures. So I've got my 15 degree beaker, my 30 degree beaker, and my 45 degree beaker. As the temperature increases, we'd expect the rate of reaction to also increase. So this would be shown by the colour change happening faster or a faster decrease in pH if you're measuring pH. The time decreasing. So the time between pink to colourless would decrease. That means it's happening faster. And that's for the same reasons that we'd expect any enzyme reaction to go faster at higher temperatures. The substrate has more uh, and the enzyme have more kinetic energy, so they're going to be moving around more, colliding and reacting with each other faster. Um, but at really high temperatures, obviously the enzyme, lipase enzyme, is likely to be denatured, which means the active site has changed shape and so the lipids can't bind anymore, so the reaction stops. And you can link this to decay. So obviously we've said that as the temperature increases, the rate of decay would increase. And that's very true. But at high temperatures, decay would stop because the microorganisms would be killed. 
just don't use the word killed for enzymes. Enzymes are denatured, not killed, because they are not alive. So there are some other ways and some other things you can do to actually measure the rate of actual decay by microorganisms or microbes. And these are examples that you might see in questions or you might be asked about. One thing that we can do is we can measure loss of mass. So if you've watched any, like the time lapse video we've seen, but if you've seen any other time lapse videos of organisms or fruit and vegetables decaying and rotting away, they do sort of for want of a better word, disappear. They break down into smaller molecules. But because the microorganisms are absorbing some of those nutrients and using them to respire and using them up, then mass is lost. So we can measure kind of the decrease in loss in mass over time. And that can help us to work out rate of decay as well. Also, we could measure increases in temperature. So as grass cuttings or plant materials decompose to form compost, so this could be in a compost heap, you could put some in a bag, seal it up. As they break down, they release heat because of the respiration of the microorganisms of the decomposers, which releases heat. And the more energy they have, the more they grow, the more they divide, the more heat gets released. You see an increase in temperature. As decomposition happens, compost bins tend to be warm if you put thermometers inside them. So you can measure that increase in temperature in a certain amount of time to show rate of decay as well. You can also actually grow microorganisms like fungus on an agar plate that contains starch, which is obviously a, a nutrient molecule that they can break down. And you can stain that starch with the iodine so you know the starch is there. It will, it will go blue black, remembering our food tests. And then as the fungi grow, they're going to release and secrete the amylase enzymes to break down the starch so that they can absorb it. So they'll digest the starch, absorb the sugars in order to help them keep growing. And that leaves that clear area, that clear ring around the fungi so that you can see how much starch they've actually, like, you can literally see and measure how much starch they've digested. And if you measure that diameter of that clear area in a set amount of time, then that can also give you rate of decay. So hopefully that summary has helped. So we've talked about microorganisms, what decay and decomposition is, how microorganism decay can be used to create biogas, how it can be used to fertilise soils, and some different ways that we can measure the rate of decay practically as well. Ouch! This is why in some videos I've explained scratches.